And what have we got here? Oh, it's a massive flathead. Oh. It's a horse. Now I'll get the big Holy net. snapping. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Beautiful morning on St George's Basin. How nice is this place? Ian Phillips, welcome to television. Thank you very much, Paul. I just said to Ian, have you ever done any television? And he looked at me with that scared look of, not really much. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but I'm sure, as I promise you, we're going to have a lot of fun. That's all that matters, isn't it? I'm sure we'll have a great day. Now, our target species on St George's Basin? Dusky flathead. Dusky flathead. When he says dusky flathead, this place holds some very nice flathead. I'm not going to say anything, I don't want to talk it up, but you've caught one or two in your day, haven't you? A couple, yeah. A couple of nice fish. A couple. He's being very modest. Let us find some flathead. Which direction, my friend? This way. Beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful morning? Glorious. Let me guess, it's always like this here. Something like that. <laughs> We've set up our first drift for the morning, chasing these big dusky flathead. You see, got the water snake in the front there, which I can just make very small adjustments as we drift along this bank. And Ian, what is it about this particular area we're fishing right now that makes it so good for flathead? One of the main reasons just here, Paul, is that the eastern side uh, tends to have one of the areas where there's a bit of current flow that comes down around the basin. Yep. And it pushes a lot of the food and the um, bait and that down into this corner. And the the big duskies tend to lie uh, anywhere from the weed edge back out into the deep water, waiting for that. So when you say flathead, Ian, what sort of flathead are you talking about? Because I hear rumours of monsters from St George's Basin. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, St George's Basin is well, well known, uh, especially in the last 11 years, for its really large flathead. That one of the reasons being is that there's been no commercial fishing yep. uh, in St George's Basin here, and it's recreational only which allows those large females to reproduce and their only uh, real predator for them is, uh, is the angler. And the good thing about anglers nowadays, most anglers will catch a big flathead and let it go because they understand the importance of fish for the system, don't they? Majority of anglers do. And as we spoke about previously, Paul, education is a large part of that and people understanding the necessity for release. But um, the basin, um, has produced you know, lots of, uh, of flathead well in excess of the metre. Uh, and I've been very fortunate to land a number of those in here. One metre? In excess. What does, what does a one metre flathead weigh? It varies. Flathead have a, uh, a, a different growth rate as far as their weight. Um, I've caught flathead that have been 101 centimetres that have only weighed 6.6 .6 kilos. And I've caught 93 centimetre flathead that have weighed 7.7 .7 kilos. There you go, so they're like us mate, all different. That's exactly right. But um, in general, most one metre flathead will normally be 
well in excess of a meat of, uh, of seven kilos. Yep. Um, and when you're getting uh, some of them, I caught one that was 1.3. 1.3 1 metres. 1 1.3 metres. And it was, uh, we didn't actually weigh it, but we estimated it by taking all the measurements yep. at about 13 kilos. 1.3 metres. That's correct. I have to ask one question, Ian. Had you been drinking that day? I haven't had a drink for 14 years. <laughs> OK. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Got him? Yep. Beautiful. Not a bad fish either. Good fish, yep. I uh, actually felt... Yeah, the little the, cat. The dunk. Yep. And then after feeling the dunk, I went, oh, we could be all right here. Okay, I'll get the net. Well, there's a bit of weight there, Ian. Yep, that's where I'm going to get the big net. <laughs> You're getting the big net. <laughs> oh, if that... Ooh. I can just feel it swimming in the, ca in yep, the current. Yep, that's what it'll do. Look at that, look at that rod tip. See the way it's just... Yep, look? it's just big head shape. Yep. Now, should I use the electric just to yeah, go just up to a bit? Yeah, you should try and keep it over the top of it. That's insane. The bite was just incredible. And Ian, I actually heard you speaking to your friend on the phone just before. Yep. And you said to him, everything is perfect. The drift's perfect in the right spot. Yep. It shouldn't take long. And what, two minutes later? Exactly right. Just using the water snake to get over the top of this fish. Ooh. Come on, this is insane. <laughs> Ian, this is... Yeah, Paul, just take your time, This mate. is insane. My... Oh, it's gone! Oh, no! The hook fell out. It's just pulled around, yep. Bad no luck, mate. We'll <sighs> that was big, one. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I can't tell you how big that flathead was. That was big. That was a monstrous <laughs> flathead. And I did nothing that wrong. That was well over, what, your, your 78? Yes. It was well over that. Well over. And that's fishing, eh? Exactly right, mate. I can't tell you how much that hurt. That flathead, I can tell you right now, was about that big. I've never had a flathead pull line like that, Ian. Yeah. Big fish. Big fish. Well, the good news is I can actually feel a little bit of scuff on the leader there. Yeah, I'd retie that. Yep. The one thing you can't prevent is when the hook falls out. Exactly. As long as there's a bend in the rod, there's a bend in that rod. Mate, it's just part of fishing. But we know they're there. We're going to go back and get them. That happens. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> what a fish. It doesn't matter where you fish or flat it around the country, the basics are pretty much the same. And Ian is a big believer in all the things I've been taught before in relation to the technique you use to really get that plastic going. I call it whipping. And what you do is wind the slack up, and then you give the plastic a sharp lift, and then wind down, and you've got to wait until the line goes slack. And you wait, and drop, bang, and again. And every time that line goes slack, we'll just see it again, hold it there, and ping, slack. That's when you do that sharp lift, whack. When the braid goes slack, that's an indication that the plastic is on the bottom. You give it the sharp lift, and I reckon that lifts the plastic about three to five foot off the bottom. What that does, because flathead lay on the bottom, and they're always looking up, it puts the plastic up nice and high, so fish from a far distance can still see it. They'll then cruise in, make their way, and go slap next time it actually lands. So slack and lift, and just keep that going. It might take 200 goes, but eventually a fish will eat it, and when it does, you'll be a very excited little boy. So remember, really get that plastic working. That's a great fish. <laughs> uh, we'll just use a little. I'll grab the net. Just slip him in there. Whoops. Um, not a monster. No. <laughs> Ian, you've, you've got some sizing issues. That's a beautiful flathead. <laughs> that is a beautiful flathead. I'll see if I can actually show you this fish. Look at that. It's an absolute cracker of a fish. 
And there's one thing about this that makes me very sad. I saw how easily you wound this beautiful fishing. <laughs> so now I know how big that one was it got away. You see how it was shaking its head? Yep. And the rattles, that's when you know that they're not a real big fish. Unbelievable. I cannot get him out of that shade into the sun to show you, but I might actually pick him up and show you. Nice fish. Beautiful. Just taken at the base of the boat. And you're saying that happens a bit? Yeah, if you keep jigging at the base of the boat, yep. don't put them under too much pressure. Oh, look at the size. They'll ease up. Look at the size of it. So. That's a beautiful fish, mate. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been netting fish long, mate. There we go. Wow! Does your husband net as well as you do? <laughs> I'll pay that. <laughs> Look at that for a fish. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to don the glove because I've had a few flattered teeth marks in the thumb over the years. Yeah. And it's not a good look. So I'm going to get the old plagic glove out, which works for many fishes, but particularly big flatheads. So I can actually grab this fish and show you just how insane he is. And Ian, on a size scale, how does this fish rate? That's that's a standard fish. That's about 60 centimetres. Yep. yep. 60 centimetres. Yeah, 60. Open your gob, mate. Oh, look at that. It's about a 60 centimetre fish, Paul. And would you call that a, a, an average, above that's, average? That's just an average fish. I think Ian's got a bit of an attitude, don't you? Average? <laughs> that's a magnificent flathead, mate. Uh, they get a bit bigger, though, don't they? They get a lot bigger than that. And the one that you lost previously was a hell of a lot bigger than that. Thanks for rubbing it in, Anne. Well, I think we are on the flattered spot because we have not been here long. We've had the monster on, hooked this beautiful fish, and things are going very well. And I've got to say, I'm extremely excited because we've got a whole day ahead of us. Exactly, mate. How good is fishing? You've got to love that. Big flattered, good work. Well, Ian, nothing left to do but pull this plastic out. And when yeah. I say this plastic, what do you call that thing? It's a riptide mullet in root beer with gold fleck. It just sounds too good to be true. <laughs> I'll put that fish back. The great thing about flathead is that they release really, really well. And Ian, you're a massive advocate for looking after your fish and getting them back in the Most water. Most definitely, Paul. Now, I haven't got this fish. He's just got my thumb. So I'm just going to give him the flick there and away he goes. Look at that. You swim off nicely. That's the great thing about flathead. Well, there's several great things about them. They taste amazing. They release really well. And for people who are learning soft plastics fishing, yes. how good are they to catch? Because they're pretty simple, aren't they? Very simple to catch um, and probably are the, the, the best bread and butter uh, soft plastics fish to be caught. Absolutely. Now, all I've got to do, because he's saying they're simple to catch, I still got to catch one of these flathead from the basin. Yeah, but you're, we're chasing really big ones for you. Yeah. I only want the big girl. I hope I find her. Let's go. Well done, mate. Good work. Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. Catching some beautiful fish here today. Incredible environment. Cockatoos flying around everywhere. Oh, look at that. Beautiful Murray Cod now. It's going to slide you into the net. The old Yozuri Jewel vibe did the job beautifully. And have a look at that beautiful fish. Aren't they incredible native Australians? Now I just want to say, that is a beautiful fish and I want to look after it. Fish are covered by a protective coating of slime and the less they get caught up in those old horrible nets, the better. This is an environmentally friendly net or a fish friendly net. It's made by Maritech. And you see it's actually made of rubber. The beautiful thing about this is it's not knocking any of the slime off the fish. The fish isn't getting all tangled up in the netting. And I can pretty much get my pliers. I should be able to get this lure out fairly easily. And the other benefit is you don't end up with a net full of hooks because that's always a worry too. And if they do get stuck in there, you can get, you can get them out pretty good. So, slip this in. Come on, Mr. Cod. You're going back very, very shortly. Look at this weed. I reckon this is why the cod are doing so well here because there's all this weed that all the bait's hiding up in. There you go. So no hooks tangled on the net. I can then pick this fish up just beautifully. In a perfect scenario, you'd wet your hands first, walk it over to the edge, Come on, Mr. Cod, and oh, look out, gone. Away it goes. 
So, fish friendly nets, just sensational because we want to look after our fellow fishers because we love them. That's why we go fishing. This fishing and boating tip was brought to you by boatsales.com.au. is big. Yep. <laughs> this could could be a big flatty. Yep. It could be a big tailor, which I'm thinking more so because of those runs that it's making there. Yep. It hasn't got the same feeling that flathead had this morning with the no, powerful surges. No, that's right. And that's what's making me think definitely not a flathead. Oh, that is six pound fins braid in fleur orange getting ripped off the little neck save there. Because we've got Taylor in here that'll go up to eight kilos. Woo. I personally caught one, the biggest, my biggest one, 6.9 kilos. 6.9 kilos? Yes. And uh, what sort of gear do you use to get that? I use six pound braid. Yep. And two kilo leader. He's a nutter, this bloke. Two kilo leader on a Taylor. That's just crazy, mate. And were you fishing for Taylor? No, I was fishing for flathead. And is that some sort of record, that fish? That was an Australian record for answer. There you go. Number one in the charts, Ian Phillips with his record. <laughs> Actually, they still called records, they called DVDs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this fish, it's weird, it's just sitting out the back there. And what I'm doing with this fish, and Ian, you know this only too well because you're a member of Answer, and Answer is all about catching big fish on light line. Exactly. I'm actually angling this fish. I'm not fishing it, I'm angling it. I'm using yes. the rod which is a beautiful seven foot two piece neck save, little neck save, 2500 reel, just six pound fins braid and a very, very light nitlon leader. And I'm just using it to angle the fish towards the boat. And what have we got here? Oh, it's a massive flathead. Oh. It's a horse. Yeah, I'll get the big Holy net. snapping. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> It is a massive flathead, Ian. Now, I'm going to hug you Paul, if you listen. Yes. Paul, you told me your biggest flathead today was 78 centimetres. It still is. Okay. <sighs> so close. Yeah. So close. My heart is in my throat, Ian. Just take your time. Steady as she goes. Get its head around now. That's it. Just get its head around. Ian, I hope you like hugging men, because guess what? <laughs> now, this is one of the good things about these big Enviros as well, Paul. Yep. People say that they don't like Enviros because they're so heavy to lift up and everything. It creates its own pocket, so that fish won't escape. Can I just and say... Congratulations. Can I just say, Ian Phillips, a year ago, I'm going to keep hugging you. I'm actually going to, Christy, I'm sorry, I'm leaving you for Ian. <laughs> Ian, we've been planning this trip for a year. We have, yeah. And you were so good, you told me these yep. two days a year ago. Times. And you promised me a big fish, and yep. I stuffed it up this morning. <laughs> Let's get this guy out of the you net and have the a look. You missed the first shot, but you got the second one. What a fish, how's the fight? That actually ran more than any other flathead that I've seen. <laughs> You want to see the size of this thing? In fact, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to cut. You guys jump on the boat because this is something you need to be up close and personal for. I cannot believe my luck. This is insane. Well, as you know, you always got to dress up for momentous occasions. The jumpers come off, the gloves are on. I'm looking pretty smart. And the drum roll. <laughs> Bring her forward, Ian. Now, do you need a hand lifting that, mate? Cause uh, it's pretty serious. Got to wait in a port. How long do you reckon this fish is going to be? Oh, it's going to be in the um, in the 90s, well in the 90s. Yep. I reckon probably around that 90, 92, 93 mark. At first sight, I thought it may be a metre, but I think probably up around to those, you know, early 90s. Oh, it's that? a fat fish, but Paul. So it is a fat it's fish. It's a very fat fish for its length. Yep. It's probably going to weigh somewhere in the vicinity of about six and a half kilos. Um, which is quite large for that size fish. Um, so yes, we caught one here uh, not too long ago. Um, unfortunately, we had to kill. Yep. And uh, the same sort of size, it was uh, six and a half kilos. Very much like this fish. 
and we sent the uh, head and frame off to fisheries and they cut the otoliths out, which are the ear bones, yep. and dissected them and uh, it was found to be 15 years of age. So this fish would be very similar to that. About 15, so yep. it's an, an adolescent. Yep. Where are we here? So. Whoop, uh, she's sliding mate, you're spot on, 92 centimetres I'm yep. seeing. Look at that. Let me just say... Oh. And this is where it's so important, the way you're handling this fish now, Paul. Yep. Supporting its underbelly so as it's not hanging by the, the head. Yep. Stretching its neck. It'd be the same as someone grabbing you by the ears and picking you up and stretching your neck. Not a good look. What we're going to do, we're actually going to put this fish back in the net and give yes. it a swim because we want to look after it. We're going to get a couple of still photos because fish like this don't come around every day. And that is an amazing fish. Just look at that. Look at that for a flathead. It is an absolute beast. And I didn't think flathead grew this big, but apparently Ian's caught them to 1.3 metres. More about that in a second. I'm just going to swim this fish and look after it. Come over this side, Ian. Thanks, mate. Yeah. And these nets are so good for this, aren't they? Oh, perfect. You're mate. a big believer in these fish-friendly nets. These ones here, yeah. Yeah, so important. And this is important too, if you're going to catch a big fish, and obviously fishermen love fish, don't we? Oh, we do, you know, like, and, and the thing is, they're too good to be caught just once. These big female flathead are the big breeders. They breed thousands and thousands of eggs each cycle. Not just in their lifetime, but each cycle. And to kill something like this is a shame. It's, it's unfortunate, it has to happen sometimes, yep. but most people these days are well educated and n n know the need to preserve them. Absolutely, yeah. and when he says it has to happen sometimes, that's simply because the fish has fought to the death, but yeah. look, it happens one hundred, and then you eat it, so it's a win-win. Oh, exactly, you know, and we sent the uh, rest of it off to fisheries for, for research and, and had it uh, um, dissected and, and all the information came back for us for our own use as well and other anglers. Now Ian, I gave you a hug and all. Yes, and it, was, it was a real man moment. It was, it was, absolutely. Now, you lived a pretty high pressure lifestyle for a while and you made a yeah. massive change recently, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I've worked a lot of uh, high pressure roles in uh, senior management and that. And uh, 18 months ago, I uh, started working at Fergo's Tackle World at Ferry Meadow. Um, and uh, one of the reasons for that is also uh, a, a lovely lifestyle change. Um, less stress, uh, but helping people to understand about more about fish like this and it's giving me a chance to put something back into my fishing that I've gained so much for. So obviously I know you, but if someone is to walk into the shop there at Ferry Meadows and say, Ian, I want help catching flathead, yep. you're going to draw a map, you're going to show them everything, aren't I you? I do. Yeah, so I, more than happy. Look, there's no secrets to me in fishing for people. Um, you, you give out as much knowledge as you can and there's an old saying, knowledge is only knowledge if you can share it. That's a fair call, isn't it? Well, there you go. Knowledge is only knowledge if you can share it. Not only is he a gun flathead fisherman, he's a philosopher too. We're going to release this big fish. Ian, there's just one thing I've got to do before we let it go. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> I love him so much. Ian, every time the people at home have seen a close-up, that is when you and I have been swimming this fish, we've been looking after her, haven't we? Exactly, Paul. Keeping her in the water, keeping her swimming, keeping the water going through her gills. She's happy. She's happy. Now, I have to say, 1,000-pound marlin, metre 25 barra, 30-pound snapper, this is right up there. It is. And the great thing is anyone can come and do it, can't they? Mate, they're all available for everybody to come and do. Now, they're I gave, here all the time. I gave you a kiss. Yeah, the don't flat, do it again, The flathead just wants to say goodbye. I'd rather <laughs> that from it. That's a slap in the face. Ian, you're a champion. I'm going to call my next boy, Ian. I hope Christy's happy with that. And this is what you come flathead fishing for, to release a fish like this. Look at that girl there. She's so weighty. Look at that. Oh, come on, girl. Look at that fish. Oh, a bit of a kick there. Look at that. Look at the dorsal going. Away he goes. Off you go. Look at the kicks. Swim, girl. And he's just Still cruising time. out of the boat. There he goes. And that is exactly, oh, now it's kicking forward. That is exactly what these big girls do. Its body, Ian, was so heavy yeah. that its head was planing up. Yeah, exactly. Wow. It's all in that girth of it. They're so fat. And what's she going to do? What's she going to do now? She'll go to the bottom there and she'll sulk for a while. Yep. She'll lay there and then she'll get herself composed and she'll be out chasing plastics again. How good is that? Sorry about all the sun behind us, but it's beaming from us boys because we're very happy campers.
extremely, so it's so good to see you come and do it, mate. Just insane. You go see this bloke at Fergo's Tackle World. I call it, Woll uh, I call it Wollongong. He calls it Fairy Meadows. Fairy Meadow. But after I kissed him, it's no wonder he calls it Fairy Meadow. <laughs> Don't kiss me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an invitation. No. <laughs> Homestead on Wedge, and I looked down with the binoculars and saw these three boys smacking salmon to 10 pounds. There's a school of fish out here. I'm just using a Yozuri Adagio and casting into the school to see what success we have. The fish they have caught tonight has been mind blowing. Cast the lure out into the school, and I'm just letting it sink a little. Let it get down to where the fish are, and then a slow to medium wind. And there are literally tons and tons of salmon off the beach there. It is just oh, wrong. Oh, he had it. Come on, eat it, boys. Had my chance and dropped that fish. But I'll get back out there and in them. There are salmon jumping everywhere out there. Look at that. It is insane. I'll just kick this fish back. Come on, dude. How's the size of that for a salmon? And away he goes. Off you go, mate. Off you go. Off you go. He's so big he can't float himself. Come on. There you go. Okay, away he goes. And that is about to land right in the middle of about five tonne of salmon. I'll let it sink a bit. Oh, let it sink a bit. And wind. Gotcha. And these are big fish. The fish the boys were catching before I managed to get the crew and get down the beach ranged eight to 11 pound. And they are literally a fish, a cast. And I've got to say, some of the best surf fishing I think the boys have ever seen. That was their call when I got back to the beach. This is what dreams are made of. You're sitting at home on the couch and you're watching this television and you dream of connecting with big fish. You ever gone down to Kilcunda Beach and caught a 500 gram salmon after a whole day sitting in the cold? Have you ever trolled around somewhere with your boat? caught a few little salmon. If you dream of catching monster Australian salmon from the beach in amazing conditions, look at this, we don't even have a wave break, then where John is a spot to do it. How's that for an Australian salmon? Come here, mate. And believe it or not, this is just a puppy. Come here. Come on, come on. Let's get that hook out of you. Let's get that hook out of you. Come on. Oh, there, the hook's out. Come here, come here. He doesn't want to give up this fish. Oh, I've got a handful of sand, but how's that for a corker Australian salmon? He's probably only about seven pound. Much bigger fish out there. I'll get my lure back into him. And he's literally a fish a cast. Four blokes on the beach. Four salmon being caught. Look at that, Shane's on again. I'll just let this fish go. Adios. Now, I'll just go through this quickly. A beautiful Yozuri Adagio 125 Heavy. It's the same lure that Cameron White caught that monster snapper at Arno Bay with. Two hooks, 20 pound leader, and some 20 pound fins. And we're into the action. Now, I can see the fish. They're straight out ahead of me there. I'll try and put this lure right back into them. Okay, that has landed right in this school of fish. I'm going to let it sink a bit and just wind slowly till it gets down to the school. See if I can get a taker. Come on, boys. Oh, yes, gotcha. Now tell me that this isn't some of the best surf beach fishing you will see anywhere in the world, let alone the great continent of Australia. Monster Australian salmon. This guy's just cracking it at the beach. And you'll hear your mates say, a fish a cast. 
Well, when they say a fish a cast, this is what they're talking about. Big fish, every single cast. And I do a lot of fishing, probably 150 to 200 days a year. And I still get very, very excited. And there's something about these Arapus trutter, Australian salmon, that just blows my mind. And they're fun in a boat. But when it comes to the beach, look at him coming out of the water there. When it comes to the beach, they just use every little bit of current, every wave. I'm going to have to run with this fish. Every little thing to their advantage. Look at him in the wash here. And how's the power? I cannot do a thing here. He's just splashing around those waves. I'll use this wave to bring him in. Here we go. And that is a truck of a salmon. An absolute truck. I'll see if I can pick him up. They're just so full of energy still. Look at the power of these fish. Come on, mate. Come on. Oh, he's covered in sand. But I suppose it's a uh, workplace hazard of the beach. Look how fat that fish is. Just take a look at that. It is wrong. And the colours? Wow. Whoops. I got him again by the tail. It's all right. Look at that. Just an incredible fish. Get that sand off. He's nudging nine pound, but I still want that big 10. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. Hook up with a local and visit one of the many Tackle World stores right across Australia. Every store is owned and operated by experts who know exactly what bait and tackle you need to catch your target species. Because they all fish. Drop into a Tackle World store, where every day's a good day for fishing. Well, through the magic of television, the trebles are out, and this fish is going back. Aren't they just incredible? Look at the size of these things. They are torpedoes. And I'll just give him a swim down here. There you go, mate. Off you go. Look at the power. He is kicking off into the surf. He's coming back. That's all right. I'll just wait for this next wave. This is good for him. We just have a chance to relax. And here he goes. They are just such big fish. Come on, mate. I'll give you a hand. You're too fat. There you go. Off you go. Go. He's literally beaching himself like a whale, he is so fat. And these are some of the biggest Australian salmon I've ever seen in my life. And look at these conditions. You don't need waders, it's a beautiful evening, four rods in the water, four fish every time. Fishing is an amazing thing, you want to give it a go? If you're thinking about planning a trip, remember these words, Wedge Island. All right. I have to say, I just feel so extremely privileged to be on Wedge Island tonight, bottom of Spencer Gulf, catching a salmon a cast. You know what? I haven't been fishing long, but I reckon this is a pretty good place to start. Shane Mensforth, Brett Mensforth, and Tom Drelaw. Is this a place to fish? <laughs> Pressure's on, I've got to get a fish. <laughs> They're under me. Oh, yes! <laughs> got him on! Oh, mine, mine fell off. This is just insane. Look at the size of these salmon, and I'm tipping. By the time, that's a big fish, Shane. He's got to be eight or nine pound, doesn't he? I'm tipping by the time these boys get their fish in, I'll be able to hook another. Out of my way, Minsmore. Well, 
as Brett Minsforth from Tackle World Adelaide Metro lands another beautiful salmon. Just one more cast. I've had three casts so far this session and locked horns with three monster fish. Shane's on again down there. It's all happening. I've got a little apology to make. And it starts like this. I've had my crew up since 4 a.m. this morning, caught some beautiful fish, made some wonderful television. They were just kicking back, relaxing, watching a bit of World Cup cricket. Good luck with that, by the way, Cameron White and Johnny Hastings. And I made them get off the couch to come down for this hot session. Boys, thank you so much, because people around the country are going to love you for it. They will not have seen salmon fishing like this, and this is a much smaller fish. When I say smaller, it's a sort of salmon that... Oh! <laughs> OK, I lied. Not a lot smaller. How fat are these fish? Look at that. The guts on them is insane. They're monsters, absolute monsters. They're just going to be gorging themselves on white bait pilchers. There's a lot of squid in the bay here. And on light gear, Stella 4000, beautiful little Shimano beach stick. This is quality beach fishing. And everyone who's contacted me on the I Fish with Tackle World Facebook page and said, Paul, more land-based fishing? Well, here it is. I hope you're enjoying it. Look at that sun. Late evening sun glistening on the back of the big salmon. And away you go, my friend. Gone. And you know the amazing thing? There's about 10 ton more of them out there. I just can't help myself. One more cast. Sorry, guys. Very hard to pick. We've got a nice deep gutter here where the water turns a greeny aqua colour. Behind that, there's a dark patch. And to the untrained eye, it actually looks like reef. But believe it or not, it's a massive school of salmon. So my goal is to get this heavy lure. It weighs 125 grams out into that patch. Let it sink a bit, then wind pretty quick to get the salmon fired up. We'll see how it goes. OK, that's actually landed just beyond them. So I'll let it sink a bit, let it get down, and now I'll crank and just see if I can't get these fish excited. Yes! Wow. tan because I apologize for the dark but this is the most amazing beach fishing I've ever seen the most amazing beach fishing Shane Bensforth has ever seen and congratulations to the SA government for realizing the true sporting potential of Arafus Trutter the Australian salmon because these things are just unbelievable latest fishing info, head to ifishtv.com.au or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash ifishtv. For the latest clips, head to youtube.com forward slash ifishtv and follow us daily on Facebook at ifish with Tackle World. Remember, subscribe to ifishtv.com.au and I'll send you an email every week with what's coming up on the show. Come on, wrestling. Catch us a fish. Oh, I had a bite then, had a bite. Come on. Come on. Yes, gotcha! Oh, it's a solid fish too. But look at this for just incredible fishing. And that fish 
Just spat my lure right there. So you know what? I'm just going to have another cast. Because I can't help myself. Thank you so much to SA Fishing Adventures. Make sure you write that one down. Also to the York Peninsula Tourism Department. They've just been fantastic. And of course, to my great mate Shane Mensforth. He always brings me to amazing places. And then he just keeps bettering himself again and again and again. Well, let me just say this, Shane. This time, I think you've outdone yourself. And if you're wondering why I haven't shut up and all these blokes are so quiet, we raced down here in such a hurry, we couldn't get a microphone on them. So I do apologise for my dulcetones, but I'm very, very excited. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, we're 